Hello viewers, this is AK Wasp, and welcome to part 3 of my Fight Kiln Guide. In part 3, we are taking a look at waves 11 through 20. So that is the second quarter of the Fight Kiln, and this guide is intended for players who are novice to intermediate level, meaning that you will be bringing a Beast of Burden along with you. This is part 3 of a 6 episode guide, which uh, takes you through your first uh, attempt at completing the, the fight kiln all the way through uh, advanced onyx farming for parts um, well through the first five parts I'm assuming that you are using a beast of burden in this example we're using a pack yak I'd like to note to ignore the actual inventory setup that I have in this guide because the footage was taken as part of uh, an unrelated challenge and so some of the items in the inventory wouldn't be recommended for the actual uh, fight kill attempt. However, I do a good, pretty good job of uh, adhering to all my, um, what's it called, safe spots. So that is why I'm using this footage. Now, after you've taken down Jad, you want to, uh, which you should have done in your magical gear, you want to run south. You want to activate your protect from magic, and that's definitely what you want to use for wave uh, 11. And you just want to go ahead and range all the... Uh, magical medges since wave 11 is just four medges and the only reason that you're running south you really could just stay in the middle is because if you they like you can see right here I'm getting hit sixes and eights um, they do splash or not splash but they hit through the prayer not at full strength but at somewhat of a strength so you want to go ahead and just go ahead and range them uh, at a distance while you're using your protect for magic that way you're not getting hit with their melee attack because their melee attack is very accurate. Um, Dreadnips speed up this process and so does the Rigor Prayer. As mentioned before, uh, you could very easily be using curses instead of uh, normal prayers, which would actually be recommended if you don't have access to the um, what might be called chaotic prayers, the ones which are unlocked from the engineering, which are the augury and rigor at the least and preferably the rapid renewal prayer also so that you can make use of, re of a regenerative bracelet. Um, but that's not compulsory, and neither are Dreadnips. Both of these are just used to uh, speed up the kills. If you have access to them, I recommend using them. Similarly, if you have access to the Eagle Eye Kite Shield and the Farseer Kite Shield, recommend using all of those. Check part 1 for more details about the inventory and equipment setup. Now, at the beginning of this next wave, which was wave 12, you uh, want to pick up the Constitution Crystal and run south once more to the L-shaped safe spot. Uh, you may have noticed that compared to the first quarter of the Fight Kiln, you now have a smaller map, meaning that the L-shaped um, safe spot only has two spots here instead of three spots, but it still works exactly the same for the most part. So you just stand all the way in the back, and then you step one step forward, and it brings the ranger into melee distance. This way you can safely uh, melee him without the secondary monster having uh, an angle on you or being within range to attack you. You could have also right there equipped uh, the Bando's armor for additional melee defense, or the Fight Shear Kite Shield, kite shield for um, increased accuracy, since the Eagle Eye Kite Shield does decrease the accuracy. Now when you are deploying dreadnips, like right here, you want to step two spaces to the west. Because if you deploy them from where I was standing before I deploy them, there is a decent chance that the dreadnip will spawn and um, get stuck behind the L-shaped safe spot right there. Also, you want to stay a nice two spaces away from the magical creatures at all times because as you just saw, uh, they do hit you with a melee attack if you're in melee distance and they hit very accurately so even if you were using a higher melee defense armor it would still hurt quite a bit so you can see right here we're switching back over to melee gear which just gives us a little bit better melee defense and the uh what's it called decrease in or non non decrease or increase in accuracy with the rapier and obviously we switch to the appropriate prayer um, after this wave, we go back to protecting from magic for the next two waves, since only magical creatures spawn. Uh, they'll actually be what I... So yeah, switch back to your range gear, and actually stand inside of that safe spot. Although I suppose it doesn't matter exactly, since 
the monster spawn in different locations. Yeah, so for this, usually just, if you don't know where to stand, stand in the L safe, safe, safe spot. On this particular wave, it doesn't matter, but normally it does. Um, actually, if I was standing in that safe spot, this mage would have um, came closer, and then I wind up doing that anyways, just so I don't have that secondary mage on me. So, again, Dreadnip speed up the kill. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about uh, all these waves because a lot of them are just ranging off the mages and it takes quite some time. It's, it's a bit slow. Again, you don't want to stand more than two spaces north or you will untrap the uh, monster that's stuck to the east, whichever monster that may be. In this particular case, it's a magical cat. But if you stood three spaces north, that other monster would be able to get at you. And this way it can't. So just stand two spaces north only. Uh, also, when you're running aground and deploying the Dreadnips, uh, you want to stand two spaces away so that they can't melee you. But it's also beneficial to stand as close as possible. So meaning as close to that two spaces away so that your Dreadnip gets into the action faster. Of course, if you're not using a Dreadnip, don't worry about it. Now, also, if you followed my advice from the first part of the fight council, from the first quarter, you would have picked up a ranged crystal. Uh, and the ranged crystal is ideal to use anytime, um, basically wave 12 or, or wave 13 or later is the ideal time I recommend using it. Um, and why do I say wave 13 or later as opposed to just making a, a general statement of wave 13? Well, the reason is that at wave 13, through wave, what is it? Is it through wave 14? Oh, but is uh, when you start only having uh, magical monsters on the map and therefore you want your maximum amount of ranged uh, attack and through wave 14 you also don't have any non-magical monsters so you're only going to be ranging against the monsters. So that's an ideal time to use it. However, you don't want to use it while an overload is activated because that's just a waste. So around wave 13, 14, when your overload runs out, which it will from having overloaded before Jad, go ahead and use the range crystal at that time. This is the only range, that first range crystal is the only range crystal that I recommended picking up. And also, I don't believe I've mentioned it yet in this part of the guide, but as with all the aspects of my guide, I have created a spreadsheet which is a nice table in you know cell format, which tells you which monsters to expect at which wave, uh, which purse to use at what time, and also which um, you know just t it tells you exactly which crystals to pick up at which wave, which is basically every other wave, um, but not on some waves. So in this particular quarter of the uh, what's it called, of the fight kiln, you'll be picking up the crystals at the beginnings of waves 12, 14, 16, and 18. And then obviously wave 20 is a jad, just like every uh, 10 waves is a jad. So yeah, that's basically all there is to say about, for the most part of these fight kiln, you just keep running back to this uh, else shape safe spot and just kind of wait. It does get a little bit more complicated because here we'll be having a ranged monster spawning and then we'll also be having a melee monster spawning in later waves uh, within this quarter. But basically you just follow the same procedure. Stand all the way south, let him get closer, step one space north so that the other guy near you can't hit you, go ahead and melee him, and then you know just switch back to your ranger gear and range the mages and you're good and i'm not going to get into too much detail about all this because it's just the same thing over and over so i will actually go ahead and fast forward until we get to the wave with the melee -er. And here we are on wave 17. On wave 17, you're doing the same as normal. You just run all the way south into that bottom safe spot. And once again, activate your protect from range prayer. Except this time, we won't be meleeing the ranger. We will be ranging him. So go ahead and let him get into melee distance with you and take one step south. 
Once you take one step south, he will no longer be in melee distance of you, and you'll be completely protected with your ranged prayer. Oh, in this case, I didn't do it, so I just meleeed him. But if you just step south, you'd be able to range him pretty easily, and no harm done, or completely painlessly. Uh, then, once you've gone ahead and done that, make sure you're within the, I don't know what you call it, an alcove, maybe, of the L-shaped safe spot. Switch to your magical gear. Polypore staff works perfectly fine, and go ahead and take out that melee. You very well might be noticing that at the moment you do not have an overhead prayer. If you're on curses at any time that you don't have an overhead prayer, it is an ideal time to be activating Soul Split. So you could be using this opportunity to heal. Anyways, you just take out the melee if you are uh, not using a Polypore staff and just using the Armadillo Kite Shield, or Armadillo. Storm of Armadillo spell, that works fine too. Make sure that you, after you've used any magical attack, if it's the Polypore Staff, make sure you switch your attack style back to Rapid. If it's the Armadillo Battle Staff, make sure you switch your attack style back to Rapid. Mainly because if you are using the Storm of Armadillo, you're just going to go ahead and keep casting the spell, even though you have a melee or ranged weapon equipped. And if you are using the uh, polypore staff, you're going to not really notice anything, but you'll be using a different stance. So you won't be using the fast or accurate, uh, or you won't be using rapid, you'll be using accurate with the crossbow, which just makes things slower. So you don't want accurate, you want to be rapid. Also, you notice right here that we have stood a bit more west of the L shaped spot such that the monster on the west still can't reach us, but the monster on the far east can't reach us either. So basically that little medge over there was stuck behind the magical cat and therefore couldn't hit us. Um, as you can clearly tell by the safe spot logo on the screen, the uh, the ideal safe spot isn't necessarily one particular spot, but it moves. So that's why it's following us around the screen. Basically, you want to stay two spaces. You want to stay far enough away so you never get meleeed while you're ranging and you also want to uh, stay far enough away so that other monsters on the screen can't hit you so for example as we were taking out all those monsters on the east we uh, were safe from this magical cat on the west wave uh, wave 18 is basically just another version of wave uh, 17 there's just one extra ranger on the screen so I'm not going to go ahead and, and talk over that but I will remind you to go ahead and pick up this magical crystal um, and then we'll, we, we will reserve, excuse me, we will resume at wave 19. And now we're back here at wave 19. Wave 19 has 8 medges, so just go ahead and hug the south wall so that less of them are attacking you at any given time, and go ahead and range them. Remember to stay out of melee distance, there's not much to think about here. The only tricky part is that there's also a ninth monster on the map, which is one of the armadillo creatures. The armadillo creatures patrol only a certain region of the screen, so as long as you're anywhere south of the center line, or neutral axis, whatever you want to call it, um, the armadillo creature will not be able to reach you, and you won't have to even think about it until all eight of the medges are gone. Uh, just range them, there's no trick to them. Basically, this is what makes this quarter of the wave or of the fight kill and take long is that it's just slow to uh, kill things with range. Uh, you could use the Deck Criminal Bolts. They are a higher range strength uh, ammunition. They're not really worth it because I was hoping that they would have a effect similar to a Hex Hunter bow where they might hit harder. So anyways, once you've uh, finally taken down all eight of those medges, which is, you know, big reason why Steel Titans are so much faster, because they can just, they use the ranged attack and they tear through the magical creatures a lot faster. Anyways, you want to do the same thing that you did before, where you take down this armadillo with the flinch method. If you're not familiar with the flinch method, you basically walk up and hit it once, and wait for its health bar to disappear. Once the health bar disappeared, you walked up and hit it again, Luckily this time it only took two hits, sometimes it can take as many as three to five hits. 
and then you go ahead and you uh, disperse with it however you see fit. Mage is typically the way to go. Pally poor staff is an easy option. Storm of Armadillo is another one. Uh, alternatively, if you had a familiar activated, which wasn't a beast of burden, and for this part of the guide, we're assuming that you are using a beast of burden, um, you could just use the familiar and the dreadnips to take it out without having to deal with uh, a pickaxe at all. And that will be addressed in part 6, which is the Steel Titan Onyx farming method. Uh, and as you notice here, once again, you don't have an overhead prayer activated, which makes an ideal time to use Soul Split if you were on curses. Anyways, this is wave 19, so once this armadillo is downed, uh, again, don't pick up that range crystal because you're not going to need it, as far as my recommendations go. Run south because Jad is spawning. Jad spawns alongside on wave 20 with a magical cat, so go ahead and put on your range gear and take out the magical cat. Be sure you don't step too far north or Jad will start will uh, be in range with you. So only step two north, not three north. Uh, actually Jad is so large three more three north might actually work, but don't risk it. Just go ahead and step two north so that your uh, dreadnip has a free path. Cause see right there how it spawned to the south of me? If I was only one north of the L-shaped safe spot, the dreadnip would have got stuck on it and not been able to get into range of the cat. If you're not using a dreadnip, you have nothing to even think about, only step one space north. And again, dreadnips are not required, they just make things faster. So at this point, go ahead and turn your, um, or not turn, switch your ammunition, or switch your gear back over to mage, uh, turn on your uh, Storm of Armadillo autocast, uh, pot up as needed, uh, and then go ahead and turn on your augury prayer, and as before, I recommend initiating combat with the protect from uh, range combat style or overhead prayer because that is what you're weakest against right there where he slams his feet down at the ground is a ranged attack and when he that's another ranged attack coming up and when he stands on his hind legs and throws it like this when he stands on his hind legs and throws a fireball at you that is a magical attack so go ahead and you know switch your prayers uh, according to whatever he's attacking you with and Jad will be down real fast, real easy, not much to worry about. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this guide and check out the rest of the playlist to continue on with the Fight Clone Guide. It's, it's very detailed and thorough like this. And also at this point, I might as well mention since we're still on Jad, if at any point that you miss a uh, per switch and you get hit pretty hard, just step a few steps back and you'll be able to heal back as much as you want because Jad has a uh, distance, or what's it called, a maximum range as to how far he can hit you. So you can always step back and, you know, just uh, avoid getting hit. Anyways, next part of the fight kiln is a bunch of meleeers and a bunch of everything, really. Next part is probably one of the harder parts. So I hope you enjoyed this fight kiln guide and stay tuned for episode 4, which is the continuation of the next quarter of the fight kill. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel and I hope you enjoyed the content and I hope you uh, come back and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.